Hello people, in this video let us look at ototoxicity. So auto means what? Ear, right? So toxicity is bad for the ear. So ototoxicity, we are talking about the drugs here which cause ototoxicity. Pharmacology, okay? So what are the drugs that cause um, ototoxicity? Drugs and some chemicals, they can damage the inner ear, they can cause sensory neural hearing loss, tinnitus, right vertigo what is tinnitus ringing of the ear right they can cause ringing of the ear vertigo vertigo what dizziness imbalance type it can be similar to motion sickness vertigo it's like you feel like you're moving though you're not moving so all vestibular problems so basically you have got an idea what ototoxicity is right and ototoxic drugs are the drugs or chemicals that lead to this problem right so, have you understood what ototoxicity is and uh, who causes it? That is ototoxic drugs. Okay. So, there are many drugs guys. So, let us look at uh, what and all causes it. Let's start off with aminoglycoside antibiotics. So, basically aminoglycoside antibiotics like streptomycin, gentamicin, tobramycin, these can cause uh, vestibular toxicity. Okay. They can cause what? Vestibular toxicity. Okay. How do they do this? They destroy the type 1 hair cells of the crista ampullaris. Okay. When administered in large dose, they can also damage the cochlea. So, they will lead to hearing loss also. Right. And cochlea means hearing loss also gone. So, where is the cochlea? So, look at this image. External ear, middle ear, inner ear. In inner ear, the spiral thing is the cochlea. Right. Then there's another category of drugs, the neomycin, canamycin, amikacin, sisomycin, all these. Okay, they're talking about neomycin, canamycin, amikacin, sisomycin and dihydrostreptomycin. All these will lead to what? We'll come to that. They're a different category they're putting it as. These will lead to? Cochleotoxic. Mainly these are cochleotoxic. These were vestibular toxic. In higher doses, they can cause damage to cochlea. Coming to neomycin, canamycin, amikacin, sisomycin and dihydrostreptomycin. These are cochleotoxic. Okay. Vestibular is which part guys? This, this part. Vestibular is this part. Cochlea is this part. Okay. So, vestibular toxic, these drugs. Right. And cochlea, main, mainly these drugs. Okay. In aminoglycoside antibiotics. So, what are the uh, side effects of aminoglycoside antibiotics? You have already studied in pharmacology, right? Ototoxicity, nephrotoxicity and neuromuscular blockade. But as we are looking at the year today, we are more concerned only with the ototoxicity. Okay. So, how do, how do these damage the cochlea? So, basically they cause selective destruction of the outer hair cells. So, in the cochlea you have seen, right? Uh, in the organ of corti you have seen the structure, outer hair cells, etc. Do you remember this? Uh, um, this is the cochlea section. Here you can see the organ of corti. In this organ of corti, you have the outer hair cells, guys. So these are the outer hair cells. These get damaged. By whom? The amikacin and all that. Neomycin, canamycin, amikacin, all these, okay. So they selectively destroy the outer hair cells, starting where? At the basal coil and then progressing to the apex of the cochlea. From the basal coil till the apex of the cochlea. What is getting damaged? The outer hair cells. Outer hair cells are getting damaged. Right? So, who are at risk? People who have uh, renal uh, function impaired. So, basically they are not able to get the drug out. Right? So, they will have more ototoxicity. Elderly people who are above age of 65. People who are receiving other ototoxic drugs like diuretics and all that. If they are taking a lot of ototoxic drugs together. Then people who are receiving high doses of ototoxic drugs, right, who have high level of this drug in their serum, right, who have genetic susceptibility to aminoglycosides. Some people are very uh, susceptible to the side effects of aminoglycosides, right. So people who are genetically susceptible, now what happens in them, the cochlea cells can die, okay. So what will be the symptoms of uh, ototoxicity? You have already seen that here. So you saw that there will be tinnitus, hearing loss right and giddiness right all these are because of ototoxicity so all these problems with aminoglycosides can come during the treatment or after the treatment also 
that will be delayed toxicity if it comes after the treatment so people you have seen aminoglycosides now right so just look at the names of the others okay for now diuretics then we have anti malarials actually one thing is missing here wait so people we, we have looked at uh, aminoglycoside antibiotics let us look at the other drugs which are ototoxic just the names just look at the names the headings diuretics right analgesics like salicylic acid uh, salicylates anti malarials like quinine chloroquine hydroquine cytotoxic drugs like the ones used in treatment of cancer right chemicals like to alcohol tobacco marijuana carbon monoxide miscellaneous drugs you have like uh, erythromycin macrolide antibiotic right propranolol ampicillin propylthiouracil is what anti thyroid drug and even topical ear drops itself can cause damage to the cochlea okay so you should be careful with topical ear drops also so people you have understood the name of the drugs right what and all are they aminoglycosides diuretics salicylic acid like nsaids then you have anti malarials like quinine chloroquine hydrochloroquine cytotoxic drugs like nitrogen mustard cisplatin carboplatin etc then you have chemicals like tobacco alcohol marijuana carbon monoxide poisoning miscellaneous drugs like ampicillin erythromycin propranolol propylthiouracil deferoxime and then you also have topical ear drops itself which can cause oto toxicity what are we discussing today oto toxic drugs otd oto toxic drugs so now let us look at the details of diuretics what do you say so diuretics like furosemide etc what they do they are going to create some imbalance right in the sodium chloride ions etc so there can be edema cystic changes in the striae vascularis of the cochlear duct okay so in most cases what will happen this change can be reversed but permanent damage if it has occurred then you cannot do anything whatever happens here there will be bilateral right it will usually be bilateral problem so let's make it bilateral then so make it bi bilateral so you have bilateral problem okay and usually it be symmetrical and it may even be sudden in onset interestingly okay next moving on to analgesics like salicylic acid salicylates these cause uh, tinnitus bilateral sensory neural hearing loss okay which actually higher frequencies are affected most okay in hearing in this case also what happens if the drug is discontinued the uh, damage is reversed okay then so we finished diuretics and salicylates right now let's move on to anti malarials like quinine chloroquine hydroxy chloroquine so first look at quinine so quinine ototoxic symptoms are like tinnitus sensory neural hearing loss same thing both of which are again reversible here okay high doses will cause permanent loss same thing what they have told so far for others also one thing extra here is if it is given to mothers uh, during pregnancy in the first trimester the child the born uh, the, can have congenital deafness and hypoplasia of the cochlea okay basically this how does it work it causes vasoconstriction of the vasoconstriction it causes vasoconstriction of the vessels small vessels in the cochlea and the striae vascularis okay so this leads to even there can be congenital deafness right and hypoplasia of the cochlea this is something new here everything else you have seen in that this is new right congenital deafness hypoplasia of the cochlea vasoconstriction that is how quinine works what about chloroquine and hydrochloroquine it is very similar to quinine only the effect okay and again it is reversible sometimes permanent damage can occur as you have seen in all other cases so far so what did we just finish we finished anti malarials so guys shall we move on to the cytotoxic drugs which cause ototoxicity so these are anti cancer drugs like nitrogen mustard that is mechlorethamine cisplatin carboplatin all these are going to be cytotoxic drugs they affect the outer hair cells of the cochlea so what do these affect guys the outer hair cells of cochlea okay let's move on now chemicals chemicals like tobacco alcohol marijuana carbon monoxide poisoning also can 
cause damage to the ear. They cause damage to the inner ear, guys. These cause damage to the inner ear. Miscellaneous drugs, like there, let's look at this. Ferry, def ferroxamine. D ferroxamine. Okay, D ferroxamine. Okay. So this one or desferioxamine, it is an iron chelating substance, correct? You have heard this in chelating agents in pharmacology. It is used in the treatment of uh, people who get repeated blood transfusion, right? For them, uh, like thalassemia, etc., where there be uh, overload of iron. For those people, they'll get chelating agent of iron, that is desferioxamine. Okay. This can also lead to high frequency sensory neural hearing loss. Okay. Similar to many other drugs, this can lead to high frequency sensory neural hearing loss okay then coming to the toxicity here they are saying the uh, children are affected a lot in this okay this ferioxamine it's a chelating agent which lands up causing ototoxicity but if you don't give it there'll be iron toxicity strange right now let us go to the other drugs here isolated case cases of deafness have been reported with erythromycin ampicillin and chloramphenicol indomethacin phenyl Butazone, ibuprofen, so many, so many, propranolol, propylthiouracil, all these isolated cases of deafness, deafness has been, have been reported, okay. Lastly, we'll move on to topical ear drops. So, some of these ear drops, they cause damage to the cochlea, okay, because of absorption through the oval and round window. Basically, the examples of this, this is like chlorhexidine and some aminoglycoside antibiotics itself, okay. So, basically, the uh, uh, potential, ototoxic potential of drugs containing polymyxin B, propylene, glycol and antifungal agents, all these have ototoxic potential. So, that is why you should always use only approved drugs for middle ear infection. You should not use whatever, uh, okay, just use the approved drops for middle ear infection. So, we are done with ototoxic drugs, guys. Hope you have understood ototoxicity. So, we looked at what ototoxicity is, what, who causes them. The drugs that are causes them are aminoglycoside antibiotics, diuretics, analgesics, antimalarials, cytotoxic drugs, chemicals, miscellaneous drugs and even topical ear drops. Okay. That's all for now in ototoxic drugs. Okay. Bye-bye.